Hi everyone, a few weeks ago we visited our friends to help them out with some yard work like planting grass and digging up some overgrown plant. I saw these succulents near the front porch and saw how neglected and unsightly they looked. I asked if I could take them home and they said yes. Now I'll show you how to fix them if you happen to find neglected succulents as well. The tools I used were a shovel, pair of gloves, and clippers. Now let's see what we have. First a dark ionium with a long drooping stems. There's another ionium called Aeonium kiwi, which looks good other than the dried weeds. This is a big messy pot with a large Echeveria umbricata with lots of small babies underneath all the dried stems and grass. There's also another Aeonium in a small plastic container. I picked up this nice pot with plain soil as well as this aloe with so many tough weeds. I found a nearly broken container in a very rusty metal pot. Too. I'm starting with the big aloe in the purple pot. All the weeds were really rooted inside so we couldn't completely get rid of them. So I flipped the pot to get a better view and that surprised me to see all those healthy yellow roots. An owl of this size will not usually have that big of a root system, but because it was engulfed in the weeds, it lacked nutrients to grow more foliage. The head was also leaning in the, in the direction of the light to get more energy. Take a look at these roots. This is a great example of how healthy aloe roots should look like. Thick, white, and yellow. I crumbled away that top dry dirt where all the weeds were and removed most so I can repot it with fresh soil. There are also two small babies growing at the trunk. To understand why it's so important to remove weeds, look at the massive root system they have. This will easily absorb all the nutrients in the soil and make your plant struggle to grow. I also found this small Echeveria. Let's give this aloe a quick wash to remove debris and dust. I repotted it and put it in dappled sunlight then gradually I'll move it to the full sun. I decided to keep the old soil so I cleaned it out with my shovel to break up the chunks and filtered out any big rocks. To reuse soil, you can add additional compost to replenish the nutrients. Surprisingly, there was a lot of trash in here such as nails and dirty plastic. Let's jump right into this next pot. I took out all the dried stems, removed the grass, and excavated the whole plant up with the roots. Now let's clean up the debris. I also combed off as much of the soil from the roots as possible. I picked out dry leaves with tweezers and gave it a good blasting with the hose. Now I plucked off all the pups and air dried them for two days. This forms a seal on the cut as to not let in bacteria. I also chopped the head of the big plant. Some of you may be wondering why I just did that and the reason is, first, there are pests all over the dried leaves, roots, and stem. Second, succulents can regenerate their roots even if all of them are cut off. Third, it was crooked and tilted, which would make it hard for the plant, resulting in the plant growing sideways and not getting a good grip on the soil. Third, I wanted to give this plant a fresh start and grow a completely new root system and give it a suitable pot. After a day of drying, I planted it in a chunky soil, also the pups too. Then I left them in a cool dry place to grow roots. Oh, and about those dry trunks, I just removed the viable plant and the rest throw it away. They were all dry. You may or may not have noticed this white cotton-like sap on the dried leaves. It's not mold, not spiderwebs, but a pest. Yes, this white sticky cotton on your succulent is called mealybug. The fluffy parts are the eggs feeding on your plants. This is what the adult mealybug looks like who is laying all of those. Most times you will see infestations near the terminal bud of your plants or the small cracks and crevices. You can also find mealybugs on the detritus like in this case. To combat this problem you can remove dried leaves, knock them off with a strong spray of water, or use alcohol to kill the eggs of the mealybug. Thankfully it did not attack the plant itself but I immediately removed the debris and blasted it with water. This scenario shows just how important it is to remove dried leaves of your round rosette shaped succulents because they are susceptible to mealybug. Now let's move on to cleaning up this mess of aeonium. There was also this sedum freelum that I took out. Once all of the weeds were gone I decided on keeping it like this. I don't hate the look of the twisted trunks hanging over the edge of the pot and I've never seen aeoniums behave like this before. I can also take cuttings from this anytime I want to use in new projects. These pieces of wood support the plant if it looks like it's about to fall over. Also this hummingbird came. <laughs> I 
I gave the uraniums a quick wash with water and added some more soil. Now what to do with those other plant pieces? I cut up the pretty top parts of the aeoniums and placed them all in one pot. Then I added it to my dedicated aeonium sanctuary. For the sedum praelum, I divided it into three parts and placed it all in one pot. I really wanted to know what's inside that big trunk, so I cut it and I found this. I emptied out this pot and was surprised to see how much perlite there was. Oh my god, it's, it's just perlite. After everything was addressed, I thoroughly washed all the pots. Here's a little update on the imbricatas. The mother plant has grown fresh white roots and still have all the babies. So I decided to transfer them all to their individual containers. For small growing plants like these, it is important that they have moisture, so I bottom watered them and now they look very green, nice and healthy. So in conclusion, these plants survive being neglected and if you happen to see some being thrown away, just remember they can always be fixed and regenerated. As always, I appreciate your viewing and I'll see you again.